How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to yet another legendary speedrun challenge. So in today's challenge, we're going to be working with Rayquaza. Now this thing is a beast. Being a combined dragon flying type with the ability airlock, nullifying all effects in weather environments such as hail, sandstorm, rain, you name it, it does not work when Rayquaza's out. Match that with Rayquaza's moveset and oh boy, we've got a heck of a fun time ahead of us. Twister and Scary Face are all we start out with, so at least we'll have a stab move, but looking ahead, we get Ancient Power at level 15, Dragon Claw at level 20, Dragon Dance at level 30, Crunch at level 35, and that's already enough to make me think we're gonna fly by really well, pun entirely intended, since we can get Fly by HM, but we can also get amazing TMs such as Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Earthquake, Brick Break, Fire Blast, Return, Rest, those are just some of the notable ones. Rayquaza's gonna obliterate, hands down. We just have to see how fast and ha how low a level we can do so. But before we get into the run itself, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel. 74% of my viewers are not subscribers, so I'd really appreciate it. And if you don't end up liking my content, you can always unsubscribe later. Lastly, I'm streaming on Twitch again. So now I finally have my own house and internet set up, so I'll be streaming five times a week over there on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, all of which will be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, except for Tuesday and Saturday, which will be right after those days' video premieres. So yes, premiere viewers, we will be going live right after, and I hope to see you there, especially since I'm going for partner status, and I need your help to get to that 75 viewer average to do so. Now without further ado, a day of reckoning is about to begin. So our rival is gonna have Squirtle, since it's the most bulky, and I don't remember if he gets Ice Beam, but if he does, it'll at least be something to take me down with. I flinch him out with Twister on the first battle here, not getting hit once before it goes down. I get the parcel to Professor Oak, and I move into the Viridian Forest. I decided that I could avoid all of the trainers, only fighting the wild Pokemon I'd encounter along the way, since instead of wasting my time running, I could usually just one or two shot them, getting to bug catcher Sammy and finishing off his level 9 Weedle and only two Twisters, getting to level 7 before getting into Pewter City. I even avoided the Pokemon Center, that's how determined we are to get this time under 3 hours. Camper Liam's team in the gym goes down to 5 Twisters combined, so I saved in front of Brock with a time of only 11 minutes, and tried at half health. Judude is a two shot with Twister, and unfortunately, since I'm an under level flying type, Rock Tomb still hurts, meaning I lost, but I reset, healed, and went back in, taking out Geodude in two Twisters, with Onyx coming out second. He misses his first Rock Tomb, so I hit Twister as he hits his second attempt, but then he misses the third attempt, allowing me to pull off a cheeky win. Getting Ray Ray here to level 10, and our first badge in hand. Not too shabby at all, looking forward to getting Ancient Power here shortly though. After getting the running shoes, I avoided as many trainers as possible since I didn't heal after exiting the gym, so I'm not at full power points. But there's no need since everything at this point is just going down to a single twister, getting Rayquaza to level 13 before going into the grass, and getting me a Spiro in 5 encounters. I actually had to turn around after that though, since I forgot to grab repels, and because I'm rushing, I'm definitely going to forget a few things. It always happens when I'm intentionally trying to go fast, but that aside, there's only two required trainers in Mount Moon, both at the end. So I took out the rocket and the scientist, grabbing the dome fossil on my way off to piss on Helix's grave, and arrive in Cerulean City unscathed, I guess. I figured I'm not high enough level to fight Misty just yet, even with a resistance to water, so I just went and grabbed the hidden rare candy before taking on Rival 2. He starts with Pidgeotto, and since I just hit level 15 and got Ancient Power, both that and Rattata are one-shots. Squirtle is a two-shot, and Abra is also a one-shot, finishing my power points perfectly along with a victory. Nugget Bridge and Routes 24 and 25 are just level fodder for Misty, since I hit level 20 by the end of it, getting both Dragon Claw and the SS Ticket, heading into Misty's gym afterwards. There's not a point in healing since Dragon Claw is at full power points, so Staryu was a one-shot and Starmie was a two-shot, outspeeding somehow and hitting two swifts before falling. Not gonna lie, I did not expect Starmie to outspeed, but I looked at its base stats and I had no clue it was a base 115, so that's cool to know. 
With the Cascade badge in hand, though, I went down to Route 6, remembering both the Citrus Berry and the Rare Candy before fighting two trainers and going straight for the SSN. And you know what time it is. Actually, it's healing time, but then it's time for Rival 3, so you were close. I actually used Twister on Pidgeotto this time, taking it down in two shots, then one-shotting both its Raticate and Kadabra with Dragon Claw before finishing off its Wartortle with both the Claw and Twister, winning in short order. Now this time, I understand completely why its Raticate died, but no matter, I must obtain Cut from the old Sailor, as the Day of Reckoning has only just begun. I performed the trade for Farfetch'd, grabbing the bike voucher, and headed into the gym itself fighting only one trainer before the battle against Surge, and that was for one purpose. I decided to give myself a handicap, making sure I was already paralyzed before the fight began, but even then, the paralysis didn't even trigger once, allowing me to sweep his team with Dragon Claw, even through double team shenanigans from both Pikachu and Raichu. Man, I was trying to hand you that match, Surge. Too bad you're a third-rate trainer with some fourth-rate Pokémon. So, the long streak of Routes 9, 10, Rock Tunnel, and Route 8 got Ray Ray here from level 24 up to level 29. Not bad for skipping trainers and all. I could have gone out of my way to go get Fly immediately after hitting Celadon City, but I figured I'd just rip through the Rocket Hideout first, since I feel like I still need to instill some fear into Giovanni after having not paid him a visit in about two weeks. That's right, bud, your unpaid vacation is over. Now hand me last month's profits before these thing dragon claws your face off. <sighs> I'm not good at insults, I'm sorry. He leads with Onyx, an easy one shot with Dragon Claw, same with Rhyhorn, leaving Kangaskhan to fall to two of those and a twister, only getting off a few mega punches. That shockingly don't even hurt, so big rip for him. I decided to use my PP ups after getting out of there that I got from both Celadon and the Hideout on Dragon Claw, since I have no intention on replacing the move, even though there's a TM with it in Victory Road, but I don't see myself overwriting it for a temporary move, even for just one battle. With that though, I went straight for Rival 4 over in the Pokemon Tower instead of Erika, though admittedly, I probably should have grabbed Fly. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that, but hey, Rival 4 is here anyway. He leads with Pidgeotto, and since I just taught Return to Rayquaza, I hit it twice, taking it down and leading to Growlithe. Luckily, Dragon is actually special in this gen, so I just one-shot that with Dragon Claw through Intimidate. Same with Executute and Kadabra, all with Dragon Claw before its last Pokemon, Wartortle, which tanked one just slightly, only to use Withdraw. Yeah, you, you should withdraw before Rayquaza bites your head off. Bye! I only had to fight two trainers on my way up the tower before getting to the rockets, finally remembering the route least populated, since I don't need experience at the moment. I'm already level 32, and that's decently high for this point in the game, even if it's only one overpowered legendary Pokemon. So after getting the Poke Flute, it's time to go get Fly. I'm going to be going into the Celadon Gym afterwards, and since I skipped the TM for Aerial Ace over on Route 9 for the sake of saving time, it's best that I grab it now. Now normally I fight the extra trainers in here since they have good meta evolution Pokemon for experience and money, and this time is no different, especially since Dragon Claw and Return are perfect for clearing things out, I don't even need Fly, getting Rayquaza to level 36 before fighting Erika. She is actually a one-shot sweep with Dragon Claw, except for Vileplume, who survives barely, misses a sleep powder, gets healed, and then I crit anyway, winning me the fight. Whoops. I swear man, my luck in Pokemon games is literally all I get. This happens yet in real life everything else ends up going against my odds. But I digress. With this, I can get into Cycling Road, though, grabbing my third power point up and a Max Elixir before going straight into Fuchsia City. I figured I have no need for the HMs just yet, so I went ahead and fought whoever got in the way in the gym, getting to Koga at level 38. I decided to go for Dragon Dance against him, since I figured that this will at least give me some more power behind my physical attacks in Return and Fly since his Pokemon are bulky, so I got one off before eating a self-destruct from coughing, leading to Muck. He only used Minimize, letting Rayquaza two-shot him with Return before the second coughing came out and ate a Return for breakfast, but of course he barely survives, hits Sludge, poisons, and takes Rayquaza out. Okay then, coughing is apparently able to take out a Rayquaza, 
neat. But the second attempt, I just went straight for the Dragon Claw, and clearly that was the best idea. But Muck just walled me since he kept getting into the red after two attacks. Then he'd heal, then he'd attack, heal again, eventually poisoning me again. Okay, I did not anticipate on needing three attempts for this battle, but that's what happens when you become complacent. Somebody takes advantage and needs to be taught a lesson afterwards for transgressions. Unnamed transgressions. I decided to go for Fly, but I realized that coughing just doesn't go down to one attack unless it's Dragon Claw, but I forgot. So I just pummeled it with Fly in return until I took it down, leading to Muck. Here I figured it would be wise to get off two Dragon Dances, then he matched that with Minimize, so I missed the first return as he went for a third one, but then the second attempt hit, critting and taking him out leading to the second coughing. So much for Minimize, I guess. The stat buffs were just too much for Kogan to handle at this point though, as both it and Weezing went down to 1 and 2 returns respectively, getting me the soul badge. Speaking of souls though, I think it's time we go soul searching. We need to find our way, so into the safari zone we go, thinking about life before we realized, man I'm playing a children's video game, I should stop being so existential. So I stopped, grabbed surf and strength, and proceeded on my merry way. And apparently, that was the right thing to do, since I went straight for the Sylph Company after those HMs, avoiding the trainer on the 5th floor to get the card key, and only facing off against my rival after fighting the one trainer on floor 10 that blocks a rare candy, Carbos, and Ultra Ball. Probably should start coming up here at the end so I don't have to fight the trainer, but it's probably smart for me to do it first, since I usually just escape rope out of the building after taking out Giovanni. All that being said though, Rival 5 is probably the hardest fight we've gone up against so far, as he's quite high level and I'm on par with him, putting him at the 5 to 1 advantage. But of course we have a Rayquaza on hand, we should be fine. Pidgeot's up first, so I went for Dragon Claw, only taking a slight wing attack before hitting Return and KOing, leading to a one-shot sweep of Growlithe, Executute, and Alakazam with Dragon Claw before the actual fight began against Blastoise. He's a massive tank, as I expected, so it actually took some hits, using Protect, on and off, and taking a Dragon Claw, Return, and another Dragon Claw with some attacks in between, along with a critical that put me on my toes, since I thought that maybe, just maybe, it could take me out, but of course it didn't. It's a starter that's water type that doesn't have Ice Beam to counter flying in Dragon types. What a dummy. Anyway, <laughs> Giovanni straight after, and Dragon Claw is somehow not a one-shot on Nidorino. It is on Rhyhorn, and again is a two-shot on Kangaskhan. Then Nido Queen managed to take three of them, poisoning me and taking down quite a bit of health before going down herself, opening up the sixth gym. What is it with Sylph Company having the most difficult battles mid-game? I feel like a pretty massive level jump occurs here even though there's upper 30s and low 40s in Koga's battle. I think it's because of the area that its battle is located in. I usually think of Saffron being an earlier area than it is, since the fighting dojo is still pretty weak in comparison, but again, I digress. I ripped through Sabrina quite easily, using Return to one-shot Kadabra, barely missing that same one-shot on Mr. Mime before using Dragon Dance and doing the same for both Venomoth and Alakazam, finishing the battle even through Confusion off of Mr. Mime's Psybeam. Good stuff, but we still have two more gym leaders to take out, both of which shouldn't be a problem since I resist one, and I'm immune to the other. Blaine's the first of those two remaining, and as a Fire-type user, I'm at an easy advantage. He leads with Growlithe, so I go for Dragon Dance twice, getting nailed with three Fire Blasts in return, not even doing half with them combined before I just one-shot his entire team with return, except for Arcanine, thanks to Intimidate putting me down to only plus one but it ends up going down to a second return, barely doing any damage itself, and giving me the Volcano Badge in return. Try harder next time, old man. Maybe use a Charizard? That'd be nice. Giovanni's last up, as you know, and since I'm at level 46 for the fight itself, I'm pretty much on par for where I want to be. Giovanni starts with Rhyhorn, an easy one-shot with Dragon Claw, as is his second level 50 Rhyhorn. Doug Trio is also a one-shot, leaving just the Nittos. The Nidos, the Nidos, I don't know, who cares. Nidoqueen does over half damage to me while also poisoning me thanks to Poison Point. Gotta love stupid abilities that work on contact even though I'm using a special move, but I took it out in two Dragon Claws, leaving just Nidoking. 
He survives a Dragon Claw, hitting a Thrash and taking me down to 3 HP after Poison, and leaving just one more Dragon Claw to pick up the win. <laughs> Jeez, man, I didn't think that Giovanni would be my closest battle in this challenge, twice. Especially because of him being a Ground-type user of all things. But that's what happens when you have a Poison-type strategy, even if it's just a sub-strategy. Like Koga and Agatha have. Six battles remain in today's Day of Reckoning, of course, with Rival Six being the only one outside of the league. He leads with Pidgeot as I go for Dragon Dance, only getting hit with two wing attacks before hitting two returns and sweeping his entire team from there. As Dragon Claw took out Rhyhorn, Growlithe, and Executute all in a row, leading to Alakazam, which was downed by Fly and leaves just Blastoise. Thanks to Dragon Dance, Fly is an easy two-shot on Blastoise, only letting him get off a weak bite before losing in the sixth, humiliating fashion in a row. I tried giving you the best starter matchup, man. It's on you to have a good move set, but I guess you're just too incompetent to put Ice Beam on there. I was tempted to fight quite a number of trainers in the Victory Road, but honestly I just skipped everything I could, though what scared me the most was seeing encounters even though I was using repels. Rayquaza is only at level 48, so I saw a few Onyxes while attempting to cross through, so that made me realize, man, I might need to grind, which would kill my time, especially with Lorelei up first. And I actually did try her at level 48, of course, being one shot by Ice Beam. Shocking. Yeah, we need something. So I went ahead and got enough coins to get Thunderbolt, and I did some level topping to get me to level 49 to maximize the usage of my rare candies that I had left over getting Rayquaza up to level 56 before entering for a serious attempt. I lost about seven times before finally getting an attempt on Lorelei that I actually needed. Essentially, I needed her to go for both Safeguard and Hail so that I could set up some Dragon Dances since Rayquaza's airlock makes it so that I would take Hail damage. But the AI is still dumb enough to use it anyway, so I'll take advantage of that. Miss Plans ends up working as she uses Hail, then Safeguard, and while I use a third Dragon Dance, I tank an Ice Beam, living with 20 HP as I start just hammering away at her team. One-shotting Dugong with Return, one-shotting Slowbro with Fly, Jinx with Return, Lapras with Fly before finally Cloyster comes out. It's too defensive, so I went for Dragon Claw, getting protected, but the second connected, winning me the fight through a terrifying Ice-type weakness. My literal only fear when I'm using Rayquaza. With that though, the rest of the league is just friggin' joke. Bruno was literally a one-shot sweep as Onyx went down to Dragon Claw, Hitmonchan, Machamp, and Hitmonlee went down to Fly once each, and the second Onyx also fell to Dragon Claw, winning me the battle in eight turns, counting for Fly taking two turns each. Agatha's just as easy, only taking three attempts to get past her, mostly due to poison shenanigans yet again. Remind me why I didn't put a Pecha Berry on Rayquaza before the first attempt? Oh right, because I'm dumb and don't think. Gotcha. Well, I decided to go with the Lum Berry, since her Gengar also has Confuse Ray, so nullifying either one of them would be the preference at this moment in time. The Boomer starts with Gengar, using Shadow Punch and a Confuse Ray as I go for two Dragon Dances. As Confusion was nullified by the Lum Berry, I hit Fly after only one double team was set up, leading to the rest of her team's downfall. Second is Golbat, an easy one-shot with Return, leading to Arbok, who uses its Intimidate ability to just hold me off for a turn while I use Dragon Dance to set that back up, going down to a Fly straight after and leading to Gengar number two. Fly is also a one-shot on Gengar, as it is with Haunter, leaving just the last member of the Elite Four, Lance. And he's relatively easy to take down since he's a Dragon-type user. Oh. Mostly, it's more of a flying type user if his dragon ears were evolved, but hey, we can't all have perfect teams, can we? He leads with Gyarados, and he only went for Dragon Rage and Twister, so I set up a few dragon dances and used Fly. Bad mistake. Twister hits in the air and does double the damage, so I go down. Fair enough, I didn't remember that that was a thing, but now that I remember that, it's time to actually destroy him. I got into the second attempt with him, getting three Dragon Dances off before using Return, taking Gyarados down in one shot and leading to Dragonair. Both Dragonairs actually went down to Dragon Claw, and Dragonite went down to a single fly, leaving just Aerodactyl. 
I figured a plus three stab fly would do plenty, but it only does a little over half as he went for scary face. Luckily, I was still plus one in speed thanks to the dragon dances. So, I just finished it off with Dragon Claw, finishing the penultimate battle without much difficulty, leaving just the final rival. He's got a pretty decent team for me, though we've been able to punch out most of it prior, but can we do it again, even with Dragon Dance? Well, let's find out. Well, I lost about a dozen times to a variety of attacks before actually getting a winning shot, so I guess it's going to be a little bit harder than I thought it would be. I'm not a big fan of getting crushed over and over again, but that's what happens when he has several Pokemon that hard counter me. I actually gave Rayquaza Blizzard over Return for a super effective attack over Pidgeot, Rhydon, and Executor, as well as Earthquake over Dragon Claw for Arcanine, basically nullifying that statement that I said earlier in the video thinking I wasn't going to overwrite Dragon Claw. But hey, here we are. I decided to add Earthquake because I wanted another move that took advantage of Dragon Dance, increasing my physical attack since ground types are physical in this generation, and I figured it would be better to have a ground type attack at 100 power rather than a 102 power normal move, and I really don't need a Dragon type move anymore, and I could use an Ice type one to be my special attack. With all of that being said, he starts off again with Pidgeot. I fired off a blizzard, one-shotting and moving on to Rhydon, and doing the same thing, leading to Alakazam. I figured it would be wise to go for Dragon Dance since I know for sure that it's going to go for Reflect, so I set up three of them, tanking a few attacks afterwards before using Fly, nailing it and KOing as Reflect wore off on the fifth turn, leading to Executor. This was the plan all along since I didn't want it to have to deal with a 70% accurate blizzard for a third time this battle against Executor. So, Fly was a one-shot, leading to Arcanine. I'm still plus two after Intimidate, so I got hit by Extreme Speed as I went for Earthquake, KOing, and learning Extreme for Speed for myself, replacing Blizzard, and leaving just Blastoise. That just got me thinking. Is Rayquaza Mega Man? Did he just beat Arcanine Man and... Uh now I've got your power! And uh, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> With that said, uh, Blastoise goes down to a single critical earthquake, winning me the battle in kind of unceremonious fashion. But hey, we take it. We take these things, even though it's not the most amazing ending ever. But who cares? I finished the run with a time of 3 hours and 6 minutes. Unfortunately, I was just shy of that sub-3 hour mark along with an accidental entry of Farfetch'd and Lapras into the Hall of Fame. But congratulations, friendos. The HM Mules deserve some credit as well. Anyway, let's look at the leaderboard. And unsurprisingly, Rayquaza is the best of the best so far. We still have a ton of other Pokemon, but that Dragon Flying type combo really tears through the Kanto region. And I can probably guess that the Regis, Legendary Birds, and Legendary Beasts are not going to be able to pass the mark that Rayquaza has set. With that though, I'm not sure what I'll be uploading next, but whatever it is, it'll probably be on Saturday evening, and I hope you look forward to it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitch page, follow the Twitter page, and I want to shout out my patrons who have been staying with me throughout the past month of a lack of good consistent uploads. You guys are amazing, and I appreciate you sitting through my slump like I had to. I'll be revising the Patreon for the new year soon, as I have some series that I plan on introducing once I've fully moved into this new place and have everything established. With that being said, though, thank you for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.